guys welcome back to my channel if you're new my name is Benita here we talk about all the things that we love as it relates to lifestyle and luxury so according to the title you see that we have five tips five hacks things I like to use but for aging skin if you think you would like this video I hope that you would keep watching so yeah guys, if you're new, again, welcome. So we do videos twice a week. Wednesdays are usually a luxury upload and then a Friday, we do what we call a Fast Five Friday. So speaking of Wednesday, we did have a lifestyle vlog that went up on Wednesday. And for some reason, the audio at the end was totally hacked. I don't know, I don't know what happened there. I looked at that video twice before it was uploaded and then after. So I don't know if it was YouTube or something in the conversion version I'm not quite sure but I do apologize but that video is up I will link it here just in case you haven't seen it we love a good fast five Friday disclaimer guys this is not a makeup tutorial this is not a skincare video we don't teach you how to do makeup I just pass along information you know that that is the thing that I love to do here on this channel is to give you all the information that you're gonna need when you're doing research on pretty much any topic. These are things that have worked for me. These are things that I am passing along from my dermatologist and esthetician. So hopefully these will be useful for you. Even though we are gonna focus on aging skin, my age group, 40s and 50s, because that's just where I am in life. But these are things that you can use for later. These are things that you can start implementing now because the goal is prevention, right? Preventative. We wanna prolong the health and the wellness of our skin. So let's rewind it back for a mini get ready with me. Hey guys, so welcome to the bathroom. You guys have been here before. So the first thing that we wanna talk about before we even get into any kind of like anti-aging techniques or hacks or what have you, is you wanna make sure that you're wearing sunscreen. Sunscreen is your first defense of anti-aging, no matter how old you are. I mean, obviously, I think babies start wearing sunscreen when they're about six months old. That's the earliest we can do uh, sunscreen. So sunscreen from birth to the end of our life is very important. That is going to be your number one thing for anti-aging. So I know you're wearing it. There's tons out there. I like the Black Girl um, sunscreen. I also like Shiseido sunscreen. So there's tons. Our fave Keiko did a whole breakdown of sunscreen. So we know we will link that video down below. So find the best sunscreen for you. Talk to your dermatologist, your esthetician. Use the sunscreen, girl. Just use it. The thing that you always want to have down pat is your skin care regimen. Whatever that looks like for you, your cleanser, your moisturizer, your exfoliating. Um, some people do Botox. A lot of people do microneedling. Like whatever you need at this stage in the game that needs to be solidified for you. Skincare is so subjective and so um, individualized to the person. Everybody's skin is different. So we always can share what works for us. Um, we can always give like suggestions, but you're gonna have to decide, work with your esthetician, work with your own skin, know your skin and know what works for you. And then having a good skincare regimen is going to make your makeup, it's gonna be a nice palette for your makeup to adhere to. It's gonna make it look flawless, even more flawless. It's gonna make you look like youthful and bright when you don't have on any makeup. And it helps the fact that you don't have to keep piling on makeup to cover up. You know, that's my, I've always said that, and that's what I taught my daughters, is that skincare is so important. You wanna look just as good without makeup. You know, you don't want to use makeup as a crutch. Makeup should always be, in my mind, an enhancement. That's my goal, and I hope that I have portrayed that. I wear a little bit of makeup every day, but I never ever have on a full face every single day. And with that being said, I just want my skin to look perfect in my mind. I really don't say, well, I do say anti-aging a lot, but I'm really anti-wrinkles. I mean, aging, I'm fine with getting older. I love birthdays. I mean, I don't lie about my age. I tell people how old I am. So, you know, I'm really not anti-aging. I'm anti-wrinkles. I'm anti my skin looking bad. I'm anti, you know, my skin looking like Tales from the Crypt. 
That's what I'm anti. I'll use the term anti-aging because you know that's the buzzword, that's what most people use, but really honestly and truly I am anti-wrinkle. So the first thing that when I was on, when I started seeing like pronounced wrinkles and laugh lines and frown lines and expressive lines getting deeper, I asked my you know dermatologist and esthetician like what's going on, what do I need? And the first thing that they said is retinol. You definitely need to have retinol in your skincare routine and regimen. So what is retinol? We know that retinol is a form of vitamin A. I mean basically that's what it is, is vitamin A. It helps to turn the skin over quickly. And when we say turn the skin over, we mean like producing cells, like sloughing off the old skin cells and regenerating with the new skin cells. Now when we're younger, it happens quickly, like in a 24 to 48 hour process. It happens consistently and quickly when we're younger. Now here's the thing, it starts to diminish when you're about in your mid to late 20s, All right? You may not see wrinkles, you may not see it, but it starts to slow down and diminish when you're in your mid 20s. My dermatologist suggests, because I'm, I'm always asking for you guys and for my daughters, but they suggest that you start doing like low level retinols in your late to mid 20s because it's going to help the production to keep going. Because we know it starts to slow down, why not, you know, help your skin to keep to keep going in that area. A lot of people younger use retinols too because it helps acne. I have adult onset acne. It has been really good for the past couple of years, but I think I have a blemish now somewhere. But yeah, I get acne still. Retinols have helped me with that. It helps to keep your unclogging of the pores. So if your pores are unclogged, then typically you have less acne. Dermatologists would put like a teenager or someone like me who is an adult on some kind of retinoid cream or you know situation but the main thing that I <laughs> the reason why I truly honestly use retinol is because it also you know helps your skin to produce collagen it replenishes collagen and collagen is the thing that makes our skin plumpy and youthful and like bounce back and if you have a lot of collagen, you're not gonna have these fine lines and wrinkles, right? Because your skin is gonna be puffy. It's gonna be not puffy in a bad way, but you know it's gonna be, I guess, buoyant and bouncy. And you know, you're gonna be able to not have those fine lines settle. So when you smile, when you're expressive like me, your skin is gonna bounce back. And again, when you get older, that lessens. So retinols help your skin to find those bounce back moments. Talk to your dermatologist as to what's the best kind for you. We know that there's prescription forms over the counter. There's plenty. Right now I'm using this one, um, the Neutrogena Retinol Pro. Um, 0.5% power serum and it's just an over-the-counter and this is one of the ones that my dermatologist suggests. If you're going to do an over-the-counter one, I have been told that you want to get one that has like stabilized um, retinol in it because that's going to be the kind that's going to absorb and you're going to get the most benefit out of. And also too, any products that have retinol in it, you want to make sure that retinol is either the first or second product listed on the ingredients list because if it's like fifth six or the last you're getting like the my the smallest amount of retinol it'll say oh this is a retinol cream anti-aging cream but it has the smallest amount of retinol you're not going to get the benefit from it. the next anti-aging hat that i have for makeup would be trying to use a full coverage concealer instead of like a heavy weight foundation. I do have some foundations that I'll link down below that you know specialize in anti-aging that are wrinkle diminishing but what I found is even if I'm going to use a foundation I need a lighter weight one that I can build up. If you're wearing a thicker foundation like out the gate you're going to put the foundation on concealer up there you're going to have so many layers it's going to make you look older and it's going to settle into those fine lines and wrinkles so the older you get kind of pull back 
So the one that I'm currently using right now is the best skin ever from the Sephora brand. This one is really good. Um, I got this sometime last year. I think I did a video on it. But this one is really good and it's full coverage multi-use concealer. So I actually use this as a lightweight foundation. I do have the Sephora Best Skin Foundation that is a really good foundation as well. But I've just been trying different things and I usually do heavier um, like the full foundation routine in the winter and then spring and summer I use a full coverage foundation I kind of pull back because I'm hot I haven't done my makeup so we're gonna go ahead and do that and I will show you guys what it looks like I pretty much put it all over I'm gonna use a damp beauty blender and just go in just go in but y'all know how to do um makeup so let me apply this and i'll be right back all right i'm back guys so it's been about 10 to 15 minutes i had to take a business call so you can see how the full coverage concealer has pretty much settled down speaking of concealer i've always talked about this hack i got this from my girl niecy j i will link her down below but she specializes in older beauty she always always talks about how we need to apply our concealer you've heard me say this before you've seen me do this before and i'm gonna keep doing it because we keep applying it too close to our eye to our waterline here and if you don't have crow's feet or if you don't have like wrinkles or fine lines here then maybe this is, doesn't apply to you but most of us do when you were older try not to put your concealer your highlighting concealer or any type of concealer right underneath so I like to use hot this as a highlighter so I just do the long V's is what I do I do the long V's and then I may put some a little bit here but I try not to go directly under there at first now I'm gonna blend up and it's gonna get there I'm gonna wait for the product to dry down and then it's gonna be a little more tacky and then I can blend it up more and as I blend up more it's gonna thin it out so by the time I get under here I don't have a big glob of highlighting concealer that settles into those fine lines and you got it we look older and another thing too when you're doing your makeup try not to do a lot, a lot of expressive a lot of expressions like hmm like this and this and stretching because you're just perpetuating the fine line so that's something too that the dermatologist noted if you, you need to look up but you don't have to do this just look up gently you know just try not to be over expressive and it's a bad habit another thing that you can do as it relates to your concealer either for your highlighting concealer and your overall full coverage concealer you definitely you can set it um with as we know with the um laura mercier or whatever you choose setting powder this is as an all over setting powder especially if i'm just using the full coverage concealer as my foundation for the day i go in with a powder brush and i just go in i put it all over and that's kind of like a all over setting powder for me and because it is in the color and that brown skin tone it melts right into the um, concealer and it gives me that full coverage foundation look without having the full foundation but i just do the same principles i don't go all the way under i just go here and the, in the um, outside of my nose and then i let that sit what's that called baking because you know you know i'm not a you know, I don't know. Um, so I let that sit and then I just brush it away to kind of make sure everything stays in place. We're gonna continue to brush that away. The next thing that I would consider is like a little bit of a hack would be blush. Use blush. I like the Fenty Cream blush. This one is in Peach Face. But what I found is that if I just put a little bit of blush on my cheeks with lip gloss and I don't have on anything, it makes me look so, I mean, youthful and awake. And because unfortunately, 
Aging is synonymous with like looking old and haggard. Unfortunately, it is. It doesn't have to be, because I don't look old and haggard. But when people think like, ugh, I'm getting older, looking like old, haggard, just whatever. So I think if you don't have time, but you wanna do a little something, or maybe you just don't wear makeup a lot, I would always have lip gloss and blush on hand. Always, always. I just take my finger, just put a little bit here, a little bit there, and I just kind of dab. That's all I would do. Even if I had nothing else on, I just dab, and it just gives like a little bit more freshness and dimension. I mean, none of this is like rocket science, but I think if we just all, you know, help each other, the world be a better place. <laughs> Final thing, guys, the fifth, I guess, anti-aging makeup hack or what have you would be is a brows. You know that I am biased being a cosmetic brow tattoo artist. As we get older, a lot of us see diminishing in hair production, especially along our brows. In the height of the 90s, we tweeze our brows. We want them thin and high and tight, like very thin, tweezable brows. Think about like Taraji brows in Baby Boy. You know how they were like very thin? That's what we wanted. Go back and look at 90s, any of the supermodels. Nobody had thick brows. Now we want thick brows and our brows don't grow because we over tweeze in the 90s, early 2000s. So if you were like me and you don't have any brows, I had to get mine microbladed because I wasn't good at like drawing them in. Like you don't have to, but of course I am a bias. Anything that's going to make my life easier, I'm going to do it. Microblading or micro shading, I will link my information down below if you're local. Pretty much it is a cosmetic brow tattoo. I've had it for three years and from like here over, I had no hair, none whatsoever. But after I got my brows microbladed and then followed up with the shading, my hair started to grow. I don't have a lot of hair in that border, but I have more hair than I used to. So it does promote hair growth. And again, I've had mine done for three years. And of course they look darker when you first get them done. And then they, you know, lighten up over time. Because when I want a more dramatic look, I I just go in and just color them in a little bit more just a little bit you can do that so even if you get your brows micro shaded you can still color them in if you want to a lot of my ladies do that they want them to look very natural during the day and then if they have a day or if they you know when they want to really glam it up they just go in and put more you know brow product on them but you don't have to do that. I hardly ever do that. I do that on special, special occasions. But even if you don't have your brows cosmetically done, we need to learn how to draw our brows in. You need to learn how to do your brows. There are plenty, <laughs> plenty of brow tutorials here on YouTube. Ask your um, hair. Most hair ladies do it. Most um, hairdressers can do your brows for you when you go and get them like threaded or waxed. Have your esthetician show you how to draw them in because yeah, drawing them in too dark, making the arch too high and just that one black line, yeah, that makes you look like you're 150 years old. And if you're going to draw them in, maybe do the pomade with the brow strokes. That makes them look more natural and thicker as well. Maybe do that. Don't do so much of a harsh line. And that's why people are afraid too to get their brows tattooed because they think it's gonna be like a harsh line. Now comment down below, do you think my brows look harsh? Is it a harsh line? I don't think so. All right guys, well, I hope that you liked this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe before you leave. Comment down below some of your tips and tricks and hacks that you like to use as it relates to makeup, skincare, all the things. Yeah, I guess that is it. I hope that you guys have the most amazing weekend and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.